Welcome back. Time for another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. With the one guy, the only guy, the guy that perhaps is best known for passing out the Masters jackets each and every year at the Masters Golf Tournament, Matt Hines. Well, last week we were saying that it was so interesting that we go from election week to master's week, <laughs> which was just made even more surreal by this weekend, you know, going from raking leaves to watching football to watching golf at Augusta. I don't know. It's just, this 2020. It's just, it just keeps getting weirder. I'm a little frightened though. I mean, as we record this, it's mid November, we got Thanksgiving next week. I'm a little worried about the grand finale. Like I'm excited for January 1st to get into a whole new year and just start over. But boy, I, you know, is it aliens next? What's coming in December? <laughs> locust. I, we've gone through all the other biblical floods. We've gone through fires. We got locusts coming. Locusts are coming next year. Well, at the beginning of the year, they were, I mean, before, you know, COVID kind of took over domestically, at least they, you know, they were talking about these murder hornets, right? I don't know if you yes. remember the murder hornets. Up where you live. Yeah. They're all over. Yeah, no, they're they're, they're here. They're still looking for hives. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping that those guys, it's cold now. So maybe they go away at maybe. least for now. Yeah, right. And no comment on the masters. Everybody said it was an incredible masters this year. And- I was pretty impressed. I mean, the play was great. The course was a lot more accessible than it is in the spring when it's a lot tighter and the greens right. are much faster. But nobody um, watching in the stands, people just watch that was weird. playing golf. Yeah. That was weird not to not have the crowds, to have the sight lines that you have without the grandstands, but even without the azaleas, just a gorgeous, gorgeous course. Well, um, today you have with another master with you. I think he's won the green jacket of sales or something. Paul, you are the king of transitions. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, and thank you everyone else for joining us on another episode of Sales Pipe Radio. Excited to all have you here. If you are listening to us live on the Funnel Media Radio Network, thank you very much for joining us and making us part of your workday, whether you're working from home or working from a socially distanced office. Stay safe. Keep your mask on. And I hope you're well out there. If you're listening to us on the podcast, thank you so much for subscribing and joining. We are here every Thursday at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. And if you are just joining Sales Pipeline Radio, welcome. And you can catch all of our past episodes, past, present, and future at salespipelineradio.com. We are featuring every week some of the best and brightest minds in B2B sales and marketing today. Absolutely no different. Very excited to have with us. I'm hoping I'm going to get your name here right, man. Sarah Zargarian. Did I get that right? Yes, Matt. Hi, how are you doing? Thank I'm you good. For hey, thanks so on. much for joining us and excited to have you on for a variety of reasons. I mean, you've been a leader in sales management, sales operations for a long time, but what really piqued my interest as a productivity and sort of organizational nerd is what you've done with the smart book field guide. So first of all, thanks for joining us and maybe give people a little bit of an update on your background and sort of what brought you here. Thanks again. Yeah, I've been working in you know, San Francisco Bay Area for my entire career. My focus has been you know, operations, go-to-market, sales coaching, sales management. Companies I've worked for over the years primarily focus on the startup, early stages, SaaS, of course, SaaS space right here in San Francisco Bay Area. But what really, again, pieced my interest for you to join today is this smart book field guide. And it's nothing like I've seen before. I mean, I'm a big um, getting things done fan with David Allen. I've used a variety of sort of journaling tools, you know, full focus planners, et cetera. But I've never seen something specifically for salespeople. What was the impetus behind putting this together? Where'd this come from? You know, over the years, I've supported and, and worked with some brilliant minds in sales leadership. And one of the painstaking things I've watched them go through is trying to get a good read on where the deal is and what's going on with the deal without having to jump through hoops and CRM data, pinging the reps, just back and forth, just to try to make sense of things. And the good ones, what I've seen them do is no matter the technology that's out there, they carry a notebook with them and they jotted down notes. And I, you know, over the years, and with curiosity, I asked, like, you know, why don't you just type it up in the computer? It's like, no, this works for me better. It sticks in my head better. And I organize my thoughts. I'm planning. I'm preparing. And they don't have to rely on a laptop for the battery to work, for the Wi-Fi to work. They just bust out their notebook and they can ramble on for hours of what's going on with those deals. And they're on top of things. So that, you know, practice and that art of it, you know, I call it the art of note taking that's kind of died down. People are seeing doing they just type anything and everything they hear during a meeting into let's say the opportunity record in Salesforce. And it's hard to make sense of things. 
I came up with this, you know, planner slash notebook that has a method to it. It's tailored for sales leaders who are looking to improve their coaching focus, right? They're looking for ways of just being more organized, you know, prioritizing your priorities. And there's a simple method to this of, you know, following general KPIs reports that they review every day. They have a section where they take their notes for their one-on-one sessions with their reps. Um, there are sections in there for them to track key opportunities, key deals, key meetings that are coming up, as well as a section for them to reflect back during the week, looking at goals, what was accomplished, what was not accomplished, as well as the, the feedback that the great sales leaders I've seen this many, many times. They know how to rally the troops, meaning around you know, their peer group. They'll pass notes and insights from the market, what they're saying for competitors, back to their peers in the marketing department, finance, CEO, and it's a bi-directional communication and they do it really well. So a couple things about this thing. So I got myself a copy. First of all, it's gorgeous. It's a brown leather. It's beautiful. It's the kind of thing that you would be proud to have sitting on your desk, getting in front of a client meeting. You know, Paul, assume we ever get into to go back to doing in-person client meetings again or seeing people face to face. It really is gorgeous. And you know, to take a step back on sort of the purpose, you know, one of the things that says right on the front of the guide, it says plan with intent, execute with conviction. Talk a little bit about what that means and why intent and conviction were such an important part of that. That's something, you know, for me personally, you know, growing up just in my career, my father always tells me, like, what are we going to do? Do it with conviction. And that's stuck to me for years. And it's not, you just just do it with not much intention behind it, but really get behind it, plan, think through your steps and go for it. The other part of just, you know, plan with intent is in sales. Uh, I've seen where a lot of folks don't plan ahead. Meaning when you're sending out a agenda item, an invitation for upcoming meeting with a prospect, they don't even list their agenda item details in there, the minutes, where we're trying to accomplish. So there's a lot of thought that goes into it, even the smallest things, you know, in the planning, like pay attention to details, care, set expectations, and follow through in a methodical manner. So the planning is key. You know, the intent, of course, there, the keyword intent is, what are you trying to do? What is intention here of that meeting? You know, are you planning to execute accordingly? The next thing with conviction, of course, is making sure that you're up to speed, you have your notes ready, you know your audience, and you come prepared and you're in control of that meeting, you're driving engagement, you're trying to make the most of it for the prospect and delivering value in that engagement. Now, let's walk through some of the keys. I mean, what I love about this as well is it sort of, it has pages for all seven days of the week and sort of Saturday and Sunday are put together. And it's really more about just sort of taking notes and reminders, but Monday and Friday are different in here. So first of all, I mean, this is really focused on sales leaders, sales managers. There's a ton of value here, obviously for a frontline sales exec to use this as well, but the structure and the cadence that you have in here is really focused on leadership. So let's walk through some of this. Cause I think the book does a nice job of this, but these are just general best practices mm-hmm. for anyone sort of running a, you know, a sales team and managing sales folks. Talk about Monday. Why is Monday different? And what are some of the focus areas that people need to do on Mondays? Sure. Mondays, you know, you're setting the tone on Mondays. And what you're trying to do is establish the right sense of expectations with the team. So majority of sales, what I've seen them do is the good ones. The sales leaders, what they've seen them do is understand, okay, what are the key client meetings that we're tracking for this week? They get ahead of it. They're writing it down. It's set of priorities for that week and the plan and prepare how to coach and help their sales reps to it. A lot of folks also are identifying, how am I going to prospect this week, whether it's inbound or outbound? And you need to get ahead of it beginning of the week and get an understanding of what's going to be the pipeline activity outside of the key client meetings that are coming up. Of course, you have key client meetings, right? And then there's key opportunities. These are the opportunities that will help you make or break your number for that quarter. So having that every week, starting the week, setting those key opportunities on your scope and managing to it week over week over week will keep you focused and keep those deals from your attention. 
of course, you know, the Tuesday through Thursday is you really sort of get into the heart of selling. I mean, these are worksheets that you can have in place, you know, throughout the week on Monday and Fridays as well. But, you know, a section that I really liked that you have, it, it literally takes up almost half the page on sort of a regular workday is coach and empower. And I know a lot of sales leaders feel like they're managing sales and not coaching sales as much as they want to or as much as they should. Talk about that importance for you and then how you recommend people on a daily basis carve out time to do that coaching empowering of their team. The coaching part, it's not so much just let me look at a deal, I'll give you some pointers. The coaching part is understanding what works well with your sales rep. And the great sales leaders invest time into making their reps better. And it's not just about on a specific deal. Now, when you're coaching, you have to understand what works best for that rep. Are you going to leverage some tactical coaching, some strategic coaching? What's the right type of coaching for your rep? Now, part of it is, you know, the reason I have it in this book is you need to plan and you're going to write down what area of focus is this week and for which rep. Obviously, you might not get to every single rep for that week, but you pick one out and you focus on their weaknesses as well as strengths. Some reps are just, you know, your A player reps, they don't need much help. And you're more focused on empowering them, giving them, feeding that energy, feeding that success to even make them be more successful. There's a lot of thought that needs to happen around this, but the commitment of at least on a weekly basis to try to coach those individuals who really need help, the fundamental help right around, am I doing a good job of qualifying my opportunities? How am I doing my follow-up emails? How am I preparing for my demo meetings? And let's say you have a sales engineer that needs to attend, if that's the business model you're in to sell your product. So these are every single step and stage of the sales cycle, there's skills there. I would highly encourage sales leaders to spend time coaching. Love this and love this advice and uh, best practices encapsulated in the Smart Book Field Guide. Definitely check out Zargarian.org. You can link over to the Smart Book Field Guide. You can pick up a copy. Good time of the year, end of year, beginning of new fiscal year, end of year holiday gifts for your team. I think very, very much appreciated. I know we're going to have to take a quick break here, pay some bills. We're going to be back with more with our guest today, Sarah Zargarian. We're going to talk a little more. about we covered Monday. We've covered the middle of the week. We're going to talk about how to wrap up the week on Friday, how to leverage the week weekend by not working, but still getting your brain involved. We'll be right back on Sales Pipeline Radio. How do you continue to drive predictable revenue in an increasingly unpredictable time? Creating a revenue growth engine is no small task, nor is it one that can be done overnight. And these days it can feel harder than ever to hit your stride. So how can you overcome the obstacles? Read the new research report on the state of predictable revenue growth from Six Sense and Heinz Marketing. Get it now at hub.sixcents.com slash PRG. That's hub dot the number six S E N S E dot com slash PRG. All right, we are back. Reminder for our live listeners, we will be dark next Thursday. I don't know about you, but next week at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific, I'm going to be in front of a football game. May or may not be napping, but I hope you all are looking forward to uh, one of my favorite holidays of the year, Paul. It's uh, four days that almost everyone, at least in the U.S., takes off. They're, quite frankly, people kind of seem like they stop working and really take enjoy it. You know, smaller gatherings maybe this year, but, you know, family food and football is one of my favorites. Can't, three of my can't favorite beat apps. that. Any changes to your plans? Are you going small? Are you not going away? Are you inviting me up for Thanksgiving? What's different this year? Paul, you are not invited uh, because, (laughs) I mean, I love you dearly, but we're just not bringing people in at all this year. You know, three young kids, we usually try to stay local, but, you know, even with just my wife and I and our three kids, we are foodies and have been thinking about the menu for a while. I mean, and, and honestly, the... One of the biggest points of negotiation, and I really mean negotiation for Thanksgiving in our house, is who's cooking the turkey and how are they cooking the turkey? Beth and I both like to cook. And as many of you have heard me before, I, I like to smoke meat. I like to put things on the grill. I like to put things on the smoker. My wife prefers a wet brine turkey. I prefer a dry brine turkey. So, yeah, it really is a point, not a point of contention, but definitely a point of negotiation to figure out how the bird's going to happen. Well, I'm going to be eating my turkey burgers, so there you go. 
Turkey burger all sounds good. That actually, <laughs> I think the second best thing, maybe tied with Thanksgiving dinner, is the post-Thanksgiving oh, yeah. leftover meals. We could have a whole episode just on appropriate strategies well, for that. Well, just in that thought, I love hearing the post-commercial conversations that you guys have. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Transition. All right. We got a lot more to talk about with our guest today, Sarah Zargarian. He is the creator of the Smart Book Field Guide, a fantastic and, quite frankly, beautiful physical guide to helping sales leaders manage their day. And what's interesting, I think almost ironic, Sarah, I mean, you've spent a lot of your career in sales operations. Increasingly, sales ops means managing a digital tech stack. Any pushback from some of the early users of this guide that it's not digital, that it's not tied into CRM? Definitely the younger generation, initial pushback, and then I would you know, sit down and just talk through it. It's like, why, right? Uh, how, why do you feel this way? You know, what's working for you today or what's not working for you? And my biggest promotion to it is when do you sit down away from the screen and away from the monitor and actually do some thinking, you know, like reflect on how things are working? Where do you put your notes? Like, are you always going to rely on opening up a laptop and getting into this robotic motion of just typing, typing, looking at things. And, you know, it is proven scientifically that when you write notes by hand, it has a higher recall ability than typing. So it's not just my opinion, but this is a scientific study that's been done. And that's kind of like my, you know, opening kind of engagement with folks trying to help them understand like this is a layer of another tool for them. It doesn't replace a laptop. So let's get into Friday. So, you know, you do your work on Monday to sort of get the week set up. You've got a great system for organizing the week focused on the sales meetings you're having, as well as a focus on coaching and empowering. Now let's talk about Friday, which is sort of a review of the week's results, but also a significant section here for self-review, which goes into a variety of areas. Let's talk a little about that. So self-review like any profession, it's great to spend time to look back of how was your own performance and how do you achieve your goals? You know, what worked, what didn't work. And for a sales leader, the biggest things you're trying to take away from my experience in studies of working with sales leaders is how did those client meetings go for that week? Did you achieve your objectives and any new roadblocks that came up? And so the self-review here is what you did to help and coach to those specific client meetings, you know, how well did it go? What would you have done differently? And what strategies and tactics did you use that worked well or you might want to take it back and, ah, I forgot to do this or I should have done that. And this is where, while your mind is still fresh, end of the week, get the stuff down. The reason for that is As you prepare for the following week, what you need to do as a sales leader, as well as whether you're coaching your sales rep or you're getting involved in the meeting with your sales rep, with a client, you have a plan of action. You have some information in your hands and you put some thought into it of, okay, I'm going to try these things next time. Or maybe I can save this deal. Let me send the email or let me call and see, hey, can I you know, get another 20 minutes or 30 minutes every time? Because we think you know, there's some things we missed. So that's what the self-review is, to really sit down and have a realistic and informative recap of the week. One of the other things you've got on the Friday, which I like a lot and we've used in other formats is sort of the feedback for key stakeholders. So, you know, competitive findings, new intelligence. I mean, this is something that obviously, you know, I think sales managers can kind of consolidate from a lot of feedback from their reps, but talk about why that's such an important cadence to get into as well. Sure. I mean, one of the things you see quite a bit is the healthy tension, I call it, between sales and marketing as an example, where Good lead, bad lead, you know, is all kinds of dialogue and <laughs> views on it of, hey, you, I didn't get a good lead. I worked, try to qualify it. It should not have come to my desk. And why not? Like, why wasn't it a good lead? Or I wish I had this content and I didn't. Or I had to, you know, do some ad hoc work on the slide. But if you would have caught this earlier or if, I, if you would have given me a better slide, I think it would have gone a lot smoother. So these are some tactical as well as strategic things where you're learning from the week and you want to share that with marketing. So if marketing can catch some of these issues and help arm your sales reps with better content, or even there's some market insights that you found out that your prospect was engaged in a discussion as well with a competitor, 
what is it? How do we address it? Do I need to take that information, update our battle cards? Or is there some of these things where we can kind of get ahead of it and share that with my marketing team to maybe be able to provide some of those answers through their you know, campaigns that they're doing or something we can put on, on our website to kind of start addressing those doubts or those questions that a prospect might have. So this the constant dialogue and keeping it focused on facts and findings will help a sales leader have a better environment to facilitate their objectives, you know, with their key stakeholders. All right. And then let's wrap this up with a discussion about the Saturday, Sunday page. So yes, it's on there, but I think, you know, even if we're encouraging sales leaders and just the professionals in general to just take their well-earned weekends, our brains are still spinning. And I think one thing I've learned from, you know, David Allen's getting things done is that, you know, having a system of mind like water means taking the things that your brain inevitably is going to think about without you giving it direction and putting it somewhere that you can access it. So putting it into this, I mean, literally 80% of the page for Saturday, Sunday, it is one page for both days is notes and reminders. So I look at that and think, okay, this is a great place for me to put things so that on the very next page, Monday, I can go one page back, see what I've been thinking about and incorporate that into my work week. That's my interpretation of how I would use this. What other ways have you been thinking about like how people can leverage that sort of think time on the weekends? Yeah, I would say don't use that high value time during the week where your clients are available for you to go through emails and notes. You're wasting hours. You're wasting opportune time to deliver value and trying to close deals. Uh, the weekends, you know, best of the best I've seen it. You know, they step away from the computer, but they'll bust out their notebook and sit there and put their thoughts together, some ideas, you know, early whiteboarding in that notebook. And then as something might trigger a new idea, they'll jot it down. And then Sunday night, typically as you usually hear this quite often, you know, from sun, Sunday night, once the kids are asleep or once, you know, after dinner, they start going through their emails. They start thinking about, okay, how do I need to prioritize even my schedule for the week? You don't want to have meetings on your calendar and you know that, hey, if I would have just taken a look at it the night before, you know, what are all my meetings for that week? Let me shuffle things around to the priorities for that week based on some of these deals and things are, you know, being shifted around. But I see folks end up doing, they spend hours on Monday, Tuesday, contacting people and updating their schedules because, oh, I forgot to do this. I can't attend this meeting. I can't attend that meeting. Mm -hmm. So this is intended for you to, you know, kind of step away from things, you know, while you're calm and just relax on the weekend. in, in a sense, you're just starting to plan again for the upcoming week, but not so heavy where you're spending hours doing so. I love it. Well, unfortunately, we're just about out of time for today's episode. Sarah, this is great. I know obviously people can go to your website, learn more about this. Where else do you recommend people learn more about the guide and where they can get some copies for themselves and for their team? Yeah, definitely. You can contact me, Sarah Zargarian. I'm on LinkedIn. Look for me there. And you can go to zargarian.org for my contact, as well as there's a shop tab. You can order it online as this is a self-serve website. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at sorrow at zargarian.org. Love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing so much today. I mean, some really great insights. I think just a good program for just managing your week as a sales leader, as a sales manager. And I love the idea of having it on paper in front of you just helps you stay focused. So thank you so much for joining here today. Thank you everyone for listening. We are going to be dark next week, Thanksgiving week. We got some great episodes and some great guests coming up here to round out this crazy year of 2020. But on behalf of my great producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. And with that, we wrap up another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio right here on the Funnel Radio channel for at-work listeners like you.